Allah the Almighty, the Exalted, says in the Quran, إن الله يمسك السماوات والأرض أن تزولا. Indeed, Allah holds the heavens and the earth in place lest they cease. Everything in this universe, brothers and sisters, heavens and earth and all that they contain, are in dire need of Allah and the assistance of Allah and the support of Allah. As a matter of fact, the state of servitude to Allah cannot be achieved. Without having the feeling of being in need of Allah, being weak, being incapable in front of the Creator, who is all-powerful, almighty, exalted. When a person or a slave does not feel that he is in need of the deity he is worshipping, he will not worship it. If he feels that he suffices himself, capability, power, everything, then there is no need to be a slave. There is no need to be enslaved to Allah. So the state of servitude can only be achieved by having that feeling and having that belief in your heart that you are a slave who is in need of Allah. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal continuously reminds us in the Quran, in different verses of the Quran, about this fact. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyyul hamid. O mankind, O people, you are in need of Allah. And Allah is all rich, praiseworthy. Allah Azza wa Jal is not in need of anyone. We are in need of Him. A Shawkani commenting on this verse said, We need Allah Azza wa Jal in all of our affairs, worldly affairs and affairs pertaining to the hereafter and religion. Ibn al Qayyim, Rahmatullahi Ali, has beautiful words regarding this matter. He said, the true feeling of being in need of Allah is a state in which one feels that he is continuously and completely in need of Allah in all his affairs, in all his situations, inwardly and outwardly, in all aspects. Just think of any matter you will find that you need Allah to achieve it. We'll start with the matter of guidance. Without Allah, we would not have been guided to the straight path. We would not have been guided to Islam. As a matter of fact, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, during the battle of uh, Al-Ahzab, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اللهم لولا أنت مهتدينا. Oh Allah, had it not been for you, we would not have been guided. It is only Allah who guides. So you are guided. What comes after guidance? Submitting to the commandments, worshiping Him, 
you can't worship him without his assistance. In the same hadith, in the same battle, he continues to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wala Tasaddaqna Wala Sallayna. And we would not have been able to spend in charity or spray. As a matter of fact, in order to instill this in our hearts, deeply in our hearts, we are commanded to say this at least 17 times a day, and we hear it five times a day. Don't you hear the Adhan say, Hayya ala salah? What do you say? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. No might, no power, no ability except with Allah. I cannot hasten to salah. Hasten to salah, I cannot without the help of Allah. Hayya ala al falah. Raised into success, I cannot, without the assistance of Allah. We say it 17 times a day. 17 times we say the Fatiha in our salawat. It is you whom we worship. And it is you, you whom we seek help and support from to worship you. So without the support of Allah, you and myself, we would not have been here today. We need him for worldly matters. We all get ill. So we need him to heal us. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, one of the supplications of the Prophet wasallam. Heal. You are the healer. There is no healer but you. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu as salam, as Allah tells us in the Quran, said, And when I become ill, it is he who heals me. Do we want provision? قُلْ Say, O Muhammad, مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Who is it who provides you from the heavens and earth? قُلِ اللَّهِ Say, O Muhammad, it is Allah. You want your wife and your children to become righteous, upright, straight on the path? You need him. Allah tells us that amongst the supplications of the righteous, they say, Hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata Grant us from our wives and offspring a delight to the eye. Meaning a source of happiness and bliss because of their righteousness and uprightness. What else? You want protection from evil? It is Allah Azza wa Jal who protects from evil. That's why we are instructed by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ and قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ once after every prayer except Fajr and Maghrib three times and in the morning and in the evening adhkar we also are instructed to recite it thrice. Just reflect on these verses. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقَ Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak. From? From what? مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقَ From the evil of all that He has created. We need the assistance of Allah. We are in need of Allah to repel evil before it takes place. And to remove it after it takes place. 
سي قل اعوذ برب الفلق ان قل اعوذ برب الناس are repellents and they are also cure and both were instructions from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the evil of what Allah has created is either something that you see or something that is hidden min sharri al waswas al khannas from the evil of the retreating whisperer meaning the devil right we don't see him as allah azza wa jalla says innahu yarakum huwa wa qabiluhu min haythu la tarawnahum he sees you him and his tribe from where you do not see him but there is also a human hitting evil من شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد from the evil of the blowers and knots magicians and from the evil of the enviers when they envy you don't see a magician when he is plotting against you you don't know of the envier when he is envying you it is all in the hidden so you seek refuge in Allah you take assistance from Allah you ask assistance and help and support from Allah from this hidden evil that you're not aware of but you repel it by virtue of reciting these surahs you need all your affairs to be taken care of Allah well, you resort to Allah. In the book of Al-Imam Al-Bayhaqi, and it is classified as sound by Al-Albani. Amongst the supplications of the Prophet وسلم, he used to say, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, O ever-living, self-sustainer, or self-sufficient rather and sustainer now look how the introduction before one asks Allah is you glorify him with his attributes and names subhanahu wa ta'ala bi rahmatika astaghith by your mercy I seek help. Okay, so all of this is admitting to your weakness and your need and to his might and exaltedness. What is it that you're asking, O slave of Allah? Aslih li sha'ni kullah. Reform and rectify all my affairs. وَلَا تَكِلْنِي لِنَفْسِي طَرْفَةَ And do not leave me in charge of my affairs, not even for a blink of an eye. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Brothers, sisters, if we live this dua with our hearts, if one truly says this dua, being attentive, present in his heart and mind, he will feel protected. He will feel sufficed. He will feel as if he's flying in air. All my affairs are being taken care of, of Allah, the ever living. The sustainer, the protector, the all-powerful, the almighty, the exalted. Allahu Akbar. This creator is taking care of me and all of my affairs. And he's not allowing me to take care of that because of my incapability and weakness. What a bliss. What a source of might. 
and power. The prophets were leading examples in fulfilling this state, expressing their need to Allah Azza wa and His assistance and help. In the book of Imam Muslim, during the Battle of Badr, or rather before the battle uh, actually broke, the Prophet وسلم, stood up and raised his hands so high that his upper garment fell off his back, fell off his shoulders. And he was asking Allah, Allahumma anjizli wa'adak! Allahumma anjizli wa'adak! Allahumma anjiz ma wa'adtani! Oh Allah, fulfill your promise to me! Fulfill what you promised me to grant me! If this group of people were to be defeated, فَلَن تُعْبَدَ بَعْدَ الْيَوْمِ فِي الْأَرْضِ You will not be worshipped on earth after today. And Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. And may Allah join us with him in Jannah. Kept comforting the Prophet wasallam, saying, Indeed he will fulfill. Indeed he will fulfill. And he did fulfill subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam called upon Allah Inni maghloobun fantasir I am overpowered so assist me I am in need of your help Musa alayhi salatu wassalam as in Surah Al-Qasas, after he assisted these two young ladies to water, he resorted with complete humility and humbleness under the shade of a tree and said, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. O oh my Lord, indeed, I am in need of any goodness that you sent down to me. Beautiful state of faith is that the state of feeling the need to Allah Azza wa Jal. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله What does one gain from fulfilling or achieving this state in his heart? You see, when one feels or reaches that state or that level that he's weak, he's in need, he will not act arrogantly with people. He will not attempt to wrong and oppress others. And with regards to his relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, when he asks of Allah Azza wa Jal, having this feeling, he will humble himself because he knows his level. He knows he, who he is and whom he's asking of. The state of our dua will differ. The emotions we will have will differ. It becomes much stronger. Our confidence that our affairs 
will be taken care of. String things. Relevant or in ratio of the strength of this feeling or this state of faith that I'm in need of Allah. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi said, when the slave turns to Allah, truly, knowing that he's in need, and then sincerely asks of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal will repel all evil, lift all harm, and shower him with mercy. Beautiful words. And a beautiful state indeed this is for any believer to have. being showered with mercy from Allah, being protected from evil, and being supported against any evil that had taken place. What does this do? It makes your gauge of reliance of Allah go to the max. When you feel that whenever you resort to him, you turn to him for your need and he fulfills it. And that he is the only source. Your trust and reliance become full in Allah Azza wa And brothers and sisters, if we come out of this life having achieved the state, then indeed we are successful. Because it is this state that entitles the slave to be admitted into Jannah and protects him from hell. Because it is this state that leads to true servitude to Allah. I conclude with a beautiful Qudsi hadith that is reported by Muslim or rather part of the hadith. Because it's a very long hadith. And it's one of the religious texts in which Allah reminds us of our need, our meekness, and His power and might. Allah in the Qudsi hadith says, Ya ibadi, O my slaves, He calls upon us as slaves, as to remind us that. I am your creator and Lord, you are my slaves. Ya ibadi, kullukum dal. All of you are misguided. Illa man hadaytu. Except for the one whom I guide. Fastahduni ahdikum. So ask me, ask me for guidance. I will guide you. We ask Allah's guidance. Ya ibadi, kullukum ja'ir. Oh my slaves, all of you are hungry. Illa man at'amtu, fastat'imuni at'imkum. Except for the one whom I feed, so ask food of me. I will feed you. Ya ibadi, oh my slaves, kullukum arin. All of you are naked. Illa man kasawtu. Except for those whom I provide with clothes. So ask clothing from me. I will clothe you. Truly and indeed. We are in dire need of Allah Azza wa Jal. In all matters, in all of our affairs. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us achieve the state of truly feeling in need of Allah Azza wa Jal and sincerely turning to Him and relying on Him and trusting in Him in all of our matters and affairs. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina.